Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today is the 28th of June. Today we're going to be doing a full front update, mainly looking at the Zaporozhia and Mahmoud fronts, which is something I've been doing over the past few days because these two sectors and also the Kherson sector have the most activity. We're going to begin by talking about Piatikatki and then we're going to work our way to the east and into the north. And so in the direction of Piatikatki, it is still a gray zone. This town, which has been contested now for several weeks, ever since the Ukrainian counteroffensive began around the 5th of June, it is still in the gray zone. Although I will say that the Ukrainians do have a better grasp on the town than the Russians. Again, the situation is very fluid. You don't have an entire uh, unit stationed in this area. You do have smaller units, smaller groups, platoon or even less in terms of size that go into here throughout the day and they set up like a firing position. And maybe they have a trench dug in somewhere around some forest belt like the one over here. And then from there, they try to conduct attacks with aid from different columns and infantry fighting vehicles to the Russian positions that are actually entrenched in the town of Zherebyanki. And so that's what we've been seeing over the past few days. And the fact that Ukraine is able to attack the town of Zherebyanki, it does mean that they do have a better control or a better grasp over Piatikatki to even be able to attempt such an attack to a town that is a bit further to the west than Piatikatki. And so what we're seeing is that during the nights, the Ukrainians are conducting these smaller scale attacks with company sized units. And according to Russian sources, there was one of these attacks in the direction of Zherebyanki including two infantry fighting vehicles that were destroyed as they were advancing through this main road towards that town. And so you can see it's still under Russian hands. The Russians have been repelling attacks in this direction really since Piatikatki became a contested town and the Ukrainians have been trying to branch out further to the west. And so that's the situation in that specific town. The Russians, they have set up different ATGM crews around that town in some of their dugouts and their firing positions. And that's one of the main reasons why the Ukrainians are experiencing a lot of losses to their different units of vehicles in this area. Now, moving on a bit to the east, the Ukrainians have also been conducting numerous assaults over recent days and additionally today as well towards the town of Robotine. And as I was saying in previous videos about this town, the Ukrainian attacks are concentrated mainly around a single paved road, which starts in Orykiv, which is a major Ukrainian um, node of attack at the moment where a lot of different units are located. And then it goes through Novodanilivka, which is a suburb of Orykiv. And then from there it goes into Arbotinia. And so the Russians, they still have full control over Arbotinia. They've been able to repel all attacks so far onto the town. The Ukrainians are fighting to secure a um, certain height, a certain hill to the north of Arbotinia, which will give them a better view of the town and allow them to establish uh, firing positions that will be much better to attack the Russian fortified positions within the town and also a bit to the west of the town where they have all of these trenches set up because they do have a lot of uh, trench lines set up in between the town of Robotinia and the town of Kopani. But so far, Russians are st still holding strong in this area. The Russians still have uh, positions within the nature reserve. Those have not been retaken by the Ukrainians, although they are trying to push the Russians out of their four positions in that direction. And so that's really it for Robotinia. Now, a town that we have not really heard from much is the town of Luhivske, although it is on the front line. It's very close to some major Ukrainian positions. A lot of Ukrainian units are actually in close proximity, including the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade, which is a unit that has seen extensive fighting in Kherson and Bakhmut. So it's been destroyed multiple times with many of the men within the, these different battalions, within the unit being killed. And so they've had to like reconstitute the unit multiple different times throughout the war. So they're one of the most drained units, although at the moment they have been filled up with new uh, recruits. Nonetheless, they're being sent to the fight uh, to the front line again. And you also have other units like the National Guard units. You have some territorial defense brigades. All these different units that have been organized for the offensive and now they're attacking on a new axis so they're attacking along this road that starts in orakiv and then branches out towards malatokmachka and then from there to bilohiria 
Bilohiria was previously contested. The Russians had positions in the town of Bilohiria, but they were pushed out a few weeks ago. Might have even been before the counteroffensive even began that they were pushed out of that town. But either way, their positions are in Luhivske, just to the east of that. And you have the Kanka River running through this area, but it's not a big obstacle just because the river itself is very narrow. Nonetheless, the Russian positions are in Luhivske, and the Ukrainians, they launched an assault towards that town. And they did this with different smaller units, these DRG groups, these small units that try to conduct these pinprick attacks on different parts of the Russian line. And so they have a small crew which has established positions just on the outskirts of the town over here. And so the Russians are trying to fight back now with their own MLRS fire and field artillery fire. And so there's some fighting going on over there. Also some Russian mortar crews in the area have been sent to try to disperse the Ukrainian attack. And so we'll have to see what develops out of that. But now you could say the town is contested. So I should mark this town as black. Now we do have a lot of activity around the Velika and Novosilka axis in Donetsk Oblast. So we talked before about Rivnopil being taken over. And we also talked about how the Ukrainian forces were pushing in the direction of uh, Makarivka and took it over. And we're also advancing from Starozove, trying to take over control of the heights that are overlooking Staromayorske. And so now they've been pretty successful at that. You can see they've expanded their zone of control around Storomayorske and now have really full control of all of the fields and the hills to the northwest of that town. This is the current front line. You could see this pretty large bulge in how you expect the line to look and how it looked beforehand. And so this bulge is on such such of a higher elevation compared to the Mokrieli River and the entire valley around that area. And so the Russian positions are on lower elevation. It makes it easier for the Ukrainians to fire mortars and small arms fire in that direction. And they are beginning to fortify their new positions in these fields, like this position over here. I presume that they're trying to fortify uh, this one over here and this one over here. They're mining it with uh, mines, landmines, obviously, anti-personnel and anti-vehicle. And they are setting up four positions over here in order to prevent a Russian counterattack. And the units that are involved in this include the 35th Marine Brigade and the 128th, I think, the 20th Territorial Defense Brigade. Because the thing is, the Ukrainians, they have the 128th Madden Assault Brigade, which we talked about before. But they also have a Territorial Defense Brigade that goes by the same name that I do believe is operating on this front. So it's probably referring to them. And so they are attacking this direction and they are being aided by new members of the 37th Marine Brigade, which is another one of these units which fought before in Avdivka, but it's been moved to the Zaporozhye Donetsk axis. And so they are being sent into this area with, you know, ATGM crews, and they're being told to set up strong points. And so that indicates to us that the Ukrainians plan on further pushing its direction, tapping into their gains that they made already, like in Rivnopil and trying to advance onto the town of Pryotinia specifically. The reason why it's safe to say this is the case is because all of the Ukrainian attacks have been directed towards the town of Pryotinia. Their attacks on the Vadne towards Pryotinia from Novodarivka in this town, it's in the direction of Pryotinia. Taking Rivnopil allows them to directly attack Pryotinia from the north and then taking control of the heights to the northeast of Pryotinia also gives them a new area that they can uh, pass through with their armored columns to begin attacking Protonia. And a big reason why the gains in this area have not been as uh, notable as you would have expected because Ukraine's poured a lot of resources. If you zoom out, just look at the unit map for a second. There is a huge amount of uh, Ukrainian forces in this area. The reason why it's been very difficult is because even though this is one of the less fortified Russian areas, they do still have a uh, utilization of a lot of net landmines in this area that they've scattered around a lot of these open fields. There's a lot of videos of these columns getting damaged by them. The Russians, they have a large concentration in this area of MLRS fire and field artillery fire. They also are calling in these air sorties, which is also 
contributing to that. And then of course, their utilization of drones and their forward reconnaissance units that plays a big role in stalling the Ukrainian advances. But the Russians may be forced to withdraw from Putinia if the attacks continue, like we saw them withdraw from Rivnopil due to the continued attacks in that direction from all sides. Now, on the Donetsk axis, there were significant reports of shelling today. And of course, Donetsk and its uh, suburbs get shelled on a daily basis. But for whatever reason, today it was reported on more widely on uh, Russian social networks. I've seen uh, reports of more than 30 artillery strikes uh, from MLRS field artillery again, using 122 and 152 millimeter shells. And so the districts that have been mentioned most widely are the Petrovsky district, Kirovsky district, Kievsky district, and the uh, Brunovsky district, if I recall correctly. And also on different suburbs of the city of Donetsk to the north, of course, you have like Horlivka. That's another town that's very close to the front line and it's constantly being shelled by the Ukrainians. And so this, again, provides further incentive for the Russians to try to push in this direction. And so we do have some news, which is unconfirmed, that the Russians are trying to push and take over some of the heights to the south. Southeast is what it said. It could be like south or southwest of the city of Marinka, because Marinka is still, um, you still do have a Ukrainian force on the western side of Marinka. And so taking control of all of the heights to the south of that town will allow the Russians to weed out the final Ukrainian resistance within that town. And also, it will give them an opportunity to take Pobieda, which we know they've been trying to take over for months now, trying to assault that town along this road over here, where I'm pointing the arrow at right now, but it's failed every single time. And given Russia's control of this fortified area, which we talked about in a previous video, then it does mean that they do have a more solidified control over the southern heights overlooking Marinka in neighboring towns, which could allow future offensives. Now, in Bakhmut, there are some changes. The Ukrainians are ramping up their offensive activities in this direction. And this is because they've been emboldened by the withdrawal of Wagner Group in this area. The Russians are trying to offset this uh, issue, though the loss of the Wagner Group by bringing in new PMCs. For instance, the Patriot PMC, which is uh, Shuigu, the defense minister's PMC, it was previously around Vuhlidar, but it never really saw combat. Now it's been moved to the uh, Bakhmut sector. And there are a few other PMCs that are also being added in. They have less men than Wagner, but they are very well equipped and this is due to the fact that they have very good connections to the higher ups in different corporations like gas prompts so they get a lot of funding or they're just directly supported by the elites in the military and so they have the best access to these uh equi these equ pieces of equipment and so this could potentially uh, offset some of the uh, loss of manpower loss of the experienced and well equipped manpower in the sector but nonetheless ukrainians are continuing their attacks we talked about Klyshivka already, but just to mention a new axis of attack, the Ukrainians are attacking towards the town of Berkivka. They've not made any confirmed gains yet, but the unit that's been responsible for these attacks from the south onto Berkivka is um, the 77th Air Mobile Assault Brigade. And then a bit to the north, the 30th Mechanized Brigade, they are advancing along the uh, E-40 highway, which connects... Slavyansk to Mahmoud. They're advancing along this highway. And what this would mean is that they can set up positions to the south of Zeliznyansk and then attack it from the south. That's what Ukraine is trying to do. And they have been able to take over some of the fields adjacent to the E40 highway in this direction. You see that I've really updated the map over here because before none of the units were placed correctly. Now I have every single unit that's operating on the Bakhmut front still. Others have been moved, but the ones that are still here, I have mapped out in their general location and where they're fighting. And so that's really the situation with them. There's a new unit that's involved with this all, and it's called the 22nd Mechanized Brigade. So this unit, it was formed this year, went through basic training. It was stationed in Harrison for a certain period of time, 
but now it's been moved to the Bakhmut front and they've seen their first recorded activity on the front line and that was around the um, fields in between Rakivka and Kremove. And so the goal in that direction would be to push from Boldanivka towards Yahidne and cut off the northern supply routes into Bakhmut. And so this new unit, instead of being moved to Zaporozhye, because, you know, a lot of these new Ukrainian units are being moved to Zaporozhye, these, uh, this one is fighting in Bakhmut, which does indicate that the Ukrainians are trying to attack on the flanks, are trying to re-enter the town, and they're taking it very seriously. And so that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.